the international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons, ICAN, has been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for 2017. In the second half of the 20th century, two global superpowers were locked in a contest of military might, knowing the weapons they possessed would be catastrophic if deployed. For decades, the burden of a nuclear arsenal was passed down from leader to leader. In the early 80s, at the beginning of Reagan's presidency, the world was poised on the brink of total annihilation. Cold War tensions soared to new heights. To many, there seemed no alternative to the strategy of mutually assured destruction as outlined by the Kennedy administration. International arsenals housed an unprecedented amount of weaponry. On both sides of the Iron Curtain, average citizens lived under the constant threat of attack. Yet, even in these dire straits, individuals rallied to take action and demand change. One group of physicians rose to prominence finding unlikely support from the East and West alike. In 1980, the IPPNW, or International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War, stated their overriding mission to sound a medical warning to humanity that nuclear war would be the final epidemic, that there would be no cure and no meaningful medical response. Their vision was clear, and their goal was no small order, the abolishment of all nuclear arsenals. A nondescript resort in Airlie, Virginia became the launch pad for future IPPNW endeavors. The IPPNW continued discussing effective action plans in pursuit of nuclear abolition. They proposed a summit to debate and articulate resolutions regarding future action and long-term decision-making. The conference was organized by Dr. Eric Shivian, one of the co-founders of the IPPNW. How do you tell someone that there's a threat over their heads of catastrophe, that hundreds of millions of people could be killed, that we, you have no idea about what we're talking, about what a nuclear war would mean. It's not winnable. You can't use these weapons. So you had to get people's attention by talking about the level of catastrophe that they face, that we all face. At the same time, if you make people so frightened and so hopeless, you also make them helpless. And how do you get people active and motivated, but also believing they can do something to prevent it? And that's a very hard balance. In March of 1981, physicians from around the world met at Early to discuss the merits of their movement and necessary action steps. Over the course of these five days in spring, delegates adopted a general stance that would come to define the position of the organization moving forward. Four short years later, the organization won the Nobel Peace Prize for its work in spreading information about the catastrophic medical consequences of nuclear warfare. However, the IPPNW continued their work instead of resting on their laurels. The following decades would see a flurry of expansion and activity as the IPPNW grew to meet the rigors of a world equipped with ever-increasing nuclear arsenals. Even as the Cold War drew to a close, the world was in no less danger from the horrors of a nuclear war. The rise of terrorism in rogue states has once again set the world on an uncertain course. But the IPPNW is hardly alone in the fight for a nuclear-free world. Their associations have grown to include 12 official partner organizations, including the World Health Organization and the United Nations. Another one of these partner organizations is ICANN, the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. The organization was founded in 2007 as an initiative of IPPNW. More than 420 organizations in 95 countries are now a part of ICANN. On July 7, 2017, ICANN and its allies sponsored the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, now signed by 57 of the world's nations, to ban nuclear weapons. Even though ICANN was awarded the 2017 Nobel Peace Prize, the fight against the use of nuclear weapons is far from won. 
there are still thousands of nuclear weapons ready to be fired at a moment's notice. I think the first issue is to be well informed. It's important for people to understand what, what the science is and what the nature of the threat is. I think it's important for them to be outspoken, to be organized. The notion about contacting your senators and representatives is, is cliched, but it's important for people who represent you to understand your views. I think we just can't keep silent.